my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And today, well, today it's all about the Bowers and Wilkins 607 Series 2 Anniversary Edition Speakers. Yeah, 25 years, 25 years of 600 series speakers. So it's the smallest of the series of bookshelf, tower, subs, and all that stuff. I'll show you a picture right here. But I wanted the most affordable audiophile speaker from Bowers and Wilkins. And here it is. And you know what? This thing is good. <laughs> it's really good. Now, I used the 685 at CNET when I was working at CNET, just as one of the speakers I would go to when I was reviewing receivers and stuff. So I have a lot of experience with the 600 series. And you know what? I think this is a step up. I think this is a step up in clarity, transparency, soundstage um, focus, low end oomph. It's actually a very impressive little speaker. By the way, before I forget, it is $699 a pair. Comes in three finishes. My, my samples were finished in white. They also come in black and oak and white, the oak and white combination. What, what distinguishes the anniversary edition from the previous 607 S2 is an upgraded tweeter and the crossover has been reworked. That's all they claim. I don't have a plain vanilla 607S2 to compare against, but I kind of, I know, I know this sound of BMW, and I think this is a move towards more transparency, more dynamic life, where before I think they were a little muted. Um, it's definitely, something's going on here, and I think I kind of know what it is. But anyway, I, in these, just getting to know the speaker, I was using uh, my Denon PMA600NE integrated amplifier. And then uh, UPS delivered this really cool little amp. It's called the Leak Stereo 130. It's an integrated amplifier. It's 1100 bucks, no, 1200 bucks. And I, that one just had real synergy with the BMW, so that's mostly what I used. And the combination was just so powerful sounding. I mean, powerful in ways that I don't expect speakers of this size and price to be, and yet not sacrificing transparency. In a way, I was mentally comparing it to the ELAC uh, debut reference that I had here, I guess like six months ago. That one was a little more laid back. The 607 is more, got more spring in its step. It's, it has more, ener it's a higher energy speaker, but it is definitely not a bright sounding speaker. As for the details of the design, well, there's a one inch aluminum dome that's decoupled from the cabinet. The, the, there's a five inch continuum woofer, woofer mid-range. You know, the, the same sort that you see on the higher end series from BMW where before they were all using Kevlar drivers, woofers. Now it's this continuum material, which is kind of a shiny gray, I think woven material. And um, it's nice that it's now come down to their most affordable range, the 600 series. Uh, one spec that really jumps out is the sensitivity spec. It's 84 dB for 2.3 volts. That's a low sensitivity design and the impedance, it's eight ohms, but it drops down to four ohms. So you gotta use a pretty serious, not a garden variety, uh, inexpensive receiver with these speakers to make them light up. Now I did say that the, that the $400 Denon PMA600NE did a great job. It's a really good combination. Uh, so you don't have to spend a lot of money, but you have to choose your electronics carefully. Uh, what else? Well, it's a rear ported design. Now, some of you guys have a thing about rear ports, like, oh, you can't put them near a wall. Well, you know what? You shouldn't put any quality audiophile oriented speakers near a wall, meaning less than, let's say, six inches away from the wall. It's not going to sound good. So whether it's a rear port or a front port, this isn't the issue. Um, you know, and it's funny that I've seen the ports move from 
from you know year to year for this front ports and the next generation has rear ports so just 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 don't get hung up on this front port rear port dichotomy you know that front ports are good rear ports are bad it's not that simple it's more complicated and best of all just don't put your speakers near a wall and everything will be just dandy oh let's let's talk about bass shall we uh, these speakers make a considerable amount of bass considering they're rather small size. I can't see too many people with two channel systems wanting to add a subwoofer to this little guy. I don't know, it just kind of blows my mind. And it's not just the 40, you know, the 40 hertz range, 50, 60, 70, 80 was amazingly complete sounding. Um, five inch woofer, small box, how can it make bass? I don't know. But, the, but, you know, the basic character of the speaker, uh, the tone quality of it is really exceptional. That is tone meaning instruments sounding like themselves and human beings sounding naturally uh, full, you know. Um, that's impressive. Oh, one other little diversion before I really get down to uh, musical examples, and that is the way the speaker looks. I think it's a very attractive, very modern looking design, especially in white. I like white speakers, by the way. But the finish on the cabinet itself for the, for the white, black, oak is vinyl. And it's not particularly high-end looking vinyl. <laughs> I wish it was nicer, and I, I even felt that way about the 705 S2, not, this, not the signature version, but the standard 705. I didn't feel that the finish was that attractive considering its price. And this speaker, the 607, it, it's $700 a pair. It should have a nicer finish. And by the way, I think I forgot to mention this earlier, they do come with grills, very nice set of cloth grills. I'm kind of a Nick Cave fan, I, and I haven't been playing any lately, and then I stumbled upon this one. Yeah, Nick Cave, he's got a deep reservoir of pain and sorrow in his voice. Now, you know, actually, I don't think he's as gloomy as he appears <laughs> to be on his records. Uh, there was that great documentary a few years ago about him. really good music doc, by the way, about him. But anyway, on his, his persona as an artist is kind of deep, dark, moody guy, you know, and his voice is really well served by these speakers and the, the, the production on this album is very uh, sparse, very clear, very distinct. Piano sound was really, really exceptional. Uh, and there's, again, it's, it is about emotional connection. And when you feel like the speaker is just getting out of the way and letting the music speak for itself, that's a really good sign. Next up was this lady here, Macy Gray. This is a Chesky recording, and I was present at the session. And the thing about this album compared to the Nick Cave is it's recorded in a church. So it has a lot of ambience and space. And the speakers let me hear that space very, very clearly. And I gotta say, my memories of this session were fun. Macy was really into it, recording live to two-track. That can be intimidating for a lot of artists because if you make a mistake, you've got to do it over again, blah, blah, blah. She was just, yeah, let's just do it, you know. She was ready to rock. And she's, again, an emotionally uh, revealing performance. She just doesn't hold things back. I enjoyed being around her. The band was really into supporting her. Oh, and one of the songs she does here is Redemption Song, the Bob Marley track. And it's just so beautiful. It, and that stark production, minimal production on this, just guitar, uh, bass, drums, and her. And she let it all out. She just doesn't hold anything back. So, but hearing the church, that ambiance of the room itself, said a lot about the speaker's ability to get get down into the subtleties of the music and hearing the room just makes it more real. Before I get into the con the next one is, is Led Zeppelin, How the West Was Won. It's a live record. Now, but before I get into this, the comparison speaker that I had for this review were the Q Acoustics 3030Is. There are bigger speakers. You can see here I have them next to each other, on top of each other. So in terms of the comparisons, the 3030 is a brighter, more aggressive sounding speaker 
Uh, it can play louder than the 607, it's, but it doesn't have more of that fullness that I love about the 607. It's a thinner sounding speaker, even though it's considerably larger. Um, but the, the lack of uh, smoothness, of refinement, elegance even coming, I, I just wanted to get back to the 607 when I was doing these comparisons. Now I was rocking out to Led Zeppelin here. This is a really good recording, easily their best live recording. And uh, Days and Confused was amazing, but Moby Dick, John Bonham's drumming was so precisely rendered by these speakers. That's what was getting me, getting my juices flowing. It's like, wow, he is so amazing. An unusual rock drummer that he just had so much technique and so many colors to his sound. He's not just the pounding away. I mean, he's a really strong drummer, but he, could, he had nuance. There was all that, that double bass drum thing that he does. Really, really cool. And these little guys were letting me hear, hear it just like, just like I wanted to. But of course the band, like, it's so iconic Led Zeppelin, right? And this recording, um, they're better live than when they're, when they're on, when they're really into it. Because I saw Led Zeppelin twice and they were, were not good performances when I saw them. It was pretty bad. I had to go home and listen to their studio albums to get over <laughs> the disappointment. But anyway, this record, they're really peaking here. And I think it's from the early 70s sound again is really really good and I cranked it up these speakers these 607s can play loud with surprising ease for such a small speaker and again this is with the leak amplifier the leak stereo 130 which is not powerful I think it's like 65 watts a channel so it's not a big bruiser amp but I was playing the speakers really loud forgot to take out my sound pressure meter app so I can't tell you exactly how loud it was, but it was probably in the high 80s, not crazy loud. And again, I didn't sense any strain coming off of the 607. To finish up, I pulled out Nicholas Payton. This is a, this is a recording from 2017 Afro-Caribbean mixtape. It's not a mixtape, it's a CD. And uh, it's an interesting, it's like a journey. It's actually a two CD set. It has, it's, it's ambient. It has a lot of spoken word parts to it, just like grooves, uh, psychedelic. It's, it's a trip. It really, really is. But, the, but I love the bass lines on this recording. So satisfying. It just flows. It just creates these spaces. Really, really, really impressive. Um, and these little guys, again, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but they defy your expectation. That's what I'm trying to say here is for a little speaker that's not crazy expensive, maybe one of the top choices I would make right now for a small room and you want good stuff without breaking the bank, the 607 anniversary is hard to beat. Well, let's round the bend here, Steve. So what do you think, Steve? I think the 607 anniversary speaker is so, it does so many things well. It really, really does. And if you have a small to medium sized room and you want a very nice stereo system and you can't handle big speakers, even towers, and your budget is in, in the under thousand dollar range, this speaker deserves a very, very serious audition. Um, really, I'm, I'm very impressed. I've reviewed my, my share of BMWs over the years, but there's something going on with this one in particular that grabs me. Partially because it is the, the, the most affordable audiophile speaker from Bowers and Wilkins. Um, and it's, it's checking all the boxes for me. I got no complaints other than the finish, which is, eh, I'm being persnickety about that. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. If you dig what I do, please subscribe to this channel. We've just surpassed or about to surpass 153,000 subscribers. So yeah, we, we come together. We meet in this place four times a week. Every other day, there is a new episode of the Audiophiliac Daily Show. So thank you. Thank you for being there. So if you have already subscribed, thank you so much for doing that. If you have yet to subscribe, 
Come on board. We got plenty of room. Join us, please. And uh, the other thing you can check out is my Patreon, which can be found at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. I will link to that below. And while you're here, you can check out playlists. We got playlists for speaker reviews and headphone reviews and music reviews and electronics reviews, all right here on the page. I'm showing you what it looks like because some people are having trouble finding those playlists. So maybe this picture will help you. There's also interviews with so many incredible people. Dan D'Agostino, that was one of my favorites. I go way back with Dan. That was nice to see him do that interview face-to-face -face before COVID. Uh, Andrew Jones, Nelson Pass. Oh, the list goes on and on. And, uh, uh, John Atkinson, that was fun. That's a multi-part series with John Atkinson. Anyway, uh, lots to see and hear and enjoy. And now I can say my work here is at last complete. So thank you again for watching. And I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.